What's up everybody? My name is Elliot. We're back again today with my 2008 Toyota Prius. If you followed this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I absolutely love my Prius. But that doesn't mean there aren't a few things that really tick me off about this car. That's what we're going to talk about today. These are the five things that I hate about my Toyota Prius. Or, as you could call it, my Prius pet peeves for you alliteration fans out there. Anyway, welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, I'm practicing good social distancing. There is no one around, at least I'm pretty sure. Let me check. Now that we're sure that there's no one else around, we can really dive into these issues. Again, this car is fantastic, but that doesn't mean there aren't a few things that bother me about it. That's just part of the reality of living with a car after a little while. You start to notice the little things and well, that seems to be what people want to know about, so here we are. To start things off, let's talk about some of the things that bother me from right behind the wheel. This is where you're going to spend most of your time in the Prius. Now, the very first thing that bothers me about this car is the noise it makes when you put it into reverse. Now, you might say noise. Well, let me show you. Now, first and foremost, this is what I'd call a gentleman's shifter. You need to only take three fingers in a kind of pinching motion here, put your foot on the brake, and guide it into reverse and you are greeted with the friendly beep. And that beep won't stop until you are out of reverse. It just beeps and beeps and beeps. We sound like we're in a backhoe at a construction zone. Now, shift it into drive. Again, gentleman's shifter goes away. Now, the idea behind this is pretty simple. I think the idea is that because that shifter always returns to a neutral state, uh, it could be easy to forget that you were in reverse. Nevertheless, it's still pretty annoying and potentially embarrassing if you have passengers to have this beep, 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 beep going on, especially when it doesn't make any noise on the outside. If anything, I figure it should beep a little bit on the outside in case the motor is off because no one would hear the car. I mean, you could feasibly back into somebody, uh, a pedestrian or something, without them knowing. But it's a weird feature, and it's definitely annoying, and something you get used to, and I'm pretty sure even the new Priuses do it. So it's not a model year-specific issue. The next thing that drives me just nutty on this car is mounted on the steering wheel here. When I first got it, I was blown away. Uh, this car has autom automatic climate control, and on the steering wheel, it actually has buttons marked temp up and down and AC auto. And I was thinking, why are you changing the temperature that often? Um, it's often been a pet peeve of mine in every car with automatic climate control that people will take it and just, you know, it, it has a temperature readout and they'll ratchet it all the way up to 90 in the winter and then turn the fan on high as if that makes it heat up faster or turn it, you know, the low extreme in the summer. It works the exact same way as it does in your house. Um, you have a thermostat in your house, you set it to, you know, 72 and hit auto, and it can tell the temperature in the house, and when it's too cold, it kicks the heat on, and when it's too hot, it kicks the AC on. It works the exact same way in the car. So I'm not quite sure why Toyota decided to include the temperature up and down buttons on the steering wheel as if you are going to need to change the temperature on the fly so often that it needs to be at a thumb's reach. Now for the next Prius pet peeve that I have, we actually need to head to the gas station down the road, which is a pretty rare thing in a Prius. This baby sips on fuel and I haven't had to fill it up in a long time, but with Corona pricing, fuel's only like $1.50 right now, so let's go fill this bad boy up and we can talk about the next thing that bothers me. Okay guys, we are underway here, uh, heading to the gas station, which again is a pretty rare thing in the Prius. And it brings me to the next pet peeve that I have with this car. If anyone out there has ever driven a exotic car like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, you'll know that going to the gas station can be quite an event uh, with people asking you questions and gawking. And that's the next thing about that bothers me about the Prius, is uh, getting gas is not always a peaceful activity. First things first though, we gotta reset our trip odometer here. And because of the times, we gotta glove up. We've got our disinfectant wipes here. So let's get out there and get to pumping. All right, here, let's 
glove up. Don't want that Rona. Remember, this has that cool little holder. If I can get it to work right. No, I do not want a receipt. Remove the nozzle. What's that? No, it's uh, it's not a 2020. It's actually a 2008. Yeah, no, I I know it looks new. No, no, I'm not an investment banker. No, I know it. It's a sharp automobile, but no, you can afford one too. I promise you. About five thousand dollars. Look at that. Only nine dollars and sixty-two cents. Thanks for asking. I'm done. I'm done filling up, so I'm gonna head out. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Oof. All right. And if you guys want a taste of what it's like to be a celebrity, drive a Prius to a gas station sometime. All right. Let's get this thing back out on the road. Okay. So the engine has shut off, and we're pulling out onto the main road now, as you can see, very slowly, because this is my next pet peeve with this car. If you truly want to drive economically, you have to drive so slowly to keep it in electric only mode. I know this is an earlier Prius and the, the newer ones are a little bit better about this, but uh, this is a 40 mile an hour road and I am just feathering it at 20 to keep it in electric only right now because I only have a quarter mile to go. I just got gas. I want it to last as long as possible. Um, so I have to drive like a jerk to make the most of my fuel. Of course, the car can drive normally, but if you really want to maximize your fuel, you want to leave it in electric only mode as long as possible. Here comes somebody just flying past me because, well, I have to drive like a jerk. Again, you don't have to drive like this, and I really don't recommend it, but the streets are relatively empty right now with everybody staying home, so uh, it's a pretty good time to show you, but regardless, it is not the safest thing in the world. That being said, we did get from the gas station back to work with no gas used, so that's something. The next pet peeve that I have with this car is another particular to my Prius only. It's when you shut it off. Now, it has this little pump that pumps coolant into a little thermos reservoir when you cut it off. It helps both lower emissions when you start it up again and helps the engine warm up faster, getting the cabin up to temperature faster, yada yada. The point is it pumps coolant from the radiator into this little reservoir. My pump seems to be going bad or whatever. It's, it's worse on some days than, than others, but regardless, when I turn the car off, it makes a screaming noise. Now, if you've ever had a crappy car that has a belt whine when you start it up, this is like that, except for it's a motor pump screaming when you turn the car off. So let me see if I can capture it. If not, I'll just cut to a different video of it, but I'm about to turn the car off and let's see if we can go run around and get it. Here, just pumping away. Honestly, that that wasn't even that bad. When it's cold out, the thing is just howling. But again, that's something that's just particular to my Prius. I know the pump's going bad. Prius people, if you're out there, if you know what that is, drop me a comment. Uh, it's not the end of the world. The thing still works. It's just another Prius pet peeve. So there you go, guys. Those are my five Prius pet peeves. As you can tell, most of them are extremely trivial and in no way would I ever recommend somebody not to get a Prius because of these things. They're just little things you notice after you own the car for a period of time. I still absolutely love this car and I want to shout it from the mountaintops or YouTube equivalent of mountaintops that everyone should have a Prius. Everyone. Anyway, it's starting to rain, so I think that's going to do it for today. As always, thanks for watching. My name is Elliot. Please be sure to subscribe so I can keep up this nonsense and comment and like and all that other normal YouTube stuff. And I will see you on the next video. Imagine if you're 
taking a girl off for her first date in one of these, she'd be like, what is wrong with your car? Why is it beeping? I have my seatbelt on, what's the problem? Well, I'm sorry, it's just my Prius. It sounds like a Caterpillar backing up, my bad. I'm sure if I had a Nissan Versa, I could find five things that I don't like about it too. 